or do you not think it will be changed? I don't know. I think it would be very unfortunate if it did. Why? Because there are unintended consequences that happen when you make certain choices. Let me give you an example. Uh, what name would you choose? What name could be chosen that's not going to offend somebody? Oh, uh, Seahawks, no. okay. uh, the Bears, there, but there's the something Packers, offensive the Jets. To somebody every time. Now, wait, 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 Rand, excuse me. Who in the hell gets offended when they hear the word Jets? Who gets offended when they hear the word bears? But the name of that Who gets word offended was when they hear the heart. word? Wait a minute. What hear the word Seahawk? Uh, uh, who gets offended? Somebody will. Who? Hey, see, for <laughs> us, the red skin is a Mr. Madison. It's not that. It, it, it's. I, and what no, I was no, talking about. I wasn't talking about Jets. I didn't you, know they were the name of the Washington Jets. But you said you pick a name, and, and, you know, like Green Bay Packers. Who's offended? I wouldn't think anyone would be. Vikings. I well, was maybe some Vikings the, out there. <laughs> the name I heard thrown around was that the neighbor had patented the name Bravehearts. And for us, that would be offensive. Why? Because the Scottish Highlanders came through, and they destroyed everything there. They destroyed us, yeah. but they didn't hurt the tribes out. What? I'm not saying that any of these folks are wrong. I'm just saying that when I first came here at 21 years old, they gave me a word. A friend of mine gave me a word, and he said, you're ethnocentric. I came out of Sampson County. We had nothing. I had to go look it up. I didn't know what, I didn't know what ethnocentric meant. I looked up the word and found out. I felt like everybody was ethnocentric. You pretty much are what you have became accustomed to. Right. So your position you know, is that you hope it won't change? I think, I hope, I hope that the government, doesn't force it to change. If the people decided to make it change, think, there were 10 people up here. One took the position that that I had. So I was the minority. But yet my position seemed to not be the most important one. But when you talk about the Redskins No, your poll, position's important or you wouldn't be sitting but here. But not the most important. Just like the Robinson mm. County poll was. 95% mm. it was a shrug. And this was one B Indians. Alright, just a shrug. But that poll was to be tossed aside. If it did, if the name did change, would you would you still be a fan? Oh, of course, okay. of course, I would still be a fan. I just don't think that the gut. All right, Miss Norton, yeah. Congressman Norton made a good point, and she said, "Well, the Native Americans are only one percent." Right, and that's true. Six hundred years ago, before government intervention, we were one hundred percent. Now, if we look at those statistics and say you're 100%, and the more government we get, the less your percentage is. Of course, if you're 100%, be true. but if you're 100 you probably wouldn't have the name Redskin. No. That was the point she made. But we would have developed our own. My point is oh, okay. that government intervention and government forcing private companies to change their name or how to do business, it has never right. worked. So what about the argument that the, if the name is proven derogatory? It's how do you prove that? Well, there's a, there are ways. I mean, that to, to, there are a lot of ways to prove it's derogatory. You, you, have, you have, well, let, I tell you what, let me get an answer. Let me start with yeah. David Zirin yeah. uh, from The Nation. Uh, you, hear, you hear our good friend Randy mm -hmm. Davis, who is here. Uh, your response? He asked the question, how do you prove a name is derogatory? Well, first of all, I'm from, I'm from New York, so I'm offended by the Jets. But that's what I'm <laughs> um, The second thing is, you know, this is supposed to be a government by the people for the people, and we have courts. And in 1946, it was decided by the courts that you could not profit off of a racial slur. But he is saying it's not a racial slur. Right. Randy, the, is that, is new, that your the, position, right. Randy? Is not the, a the, there slur. are people who think all kind of words aren't racial slurs. How there are people in this country who think the world is flat and Sarah Palin should have been vice president. Just because you think it doesn't make it so. I mean, we have, we have to have institutions that actually are able to judge these things. And I, I have to say that you hear all the time people say things like, well, where does it end? You know, the PETA people are offended by bears. Environmentalists are offended by jets. You know, uh, tall people are offended by giants. But I think you have to put the question of Native American mascotting in an entirely different category 
precisely because of something that Randy said, because this nation was founded on genocide. History happened. History matters. In 1491, it was 100%. We're indigenous people in this country. Now it's 0.8%, and that history has to factor into this. And I, well, the thing about mascotting that's so important, and this relates to what one of the speakers said before, uh, the gentleman who was sitting in the seat, the gentleman over there who spoke about the bigger issues. Jeff, with the, Jeff Townsend. Yes, Jeff Townsend, and you're mm -hmm. absolutely right, and that's been my experience in speaking with Native Americans. And they, I've met many who say, this issue doesn't matter to me because we're dealing with poverty, we're dealing with health care, we're dealing with education, and I, and I feel that in my heart. But there, there are so many studies, though, that show that the prevalence of mascotting allows the dominant culture to look the other way and not notice that these crimes are taking place on the reservations, these crimes of, of, of child mortality, the pain of being Native American on the Pine Ridge Reservation and the absence of opportunity. And that's why we have to stand up to mascotting because history happened and history matters. Uh, Robert, Ho Robert, and I'll come to you. Robert Hogan, Deputy Director of National Congress of American Indians, a couple of minutes before the break, quickly, and we're going to move through the, this panel. Your response to what you've heard, uh, and thank you for being here. I think part of what we're addressing here has to do with education you know, in terms of how you brought up the circumstances as well as the educational process itself. Growing up in Oklahoma, I did from Oklahoma, and reading in history books from elementary on up about Native peoples. What little there was in those books, because we didn't write them, non Native people wrote them, was that we were in the way, things like Manifest Destiny. You know? So those were the things that start uh, you thinking differently and feeling differently uh, from, from your non Natives, other than the fact that you know, you're of you know, color. But, also, the fact that you know we're, we're taught not to think about skin color just like everyone else, but what's in your heart, what's in your mind, and how you treat people. And those, those are the many things and, and, and attributes that many people have. And so how that e equates to um, taking this on the chin from someone who may be of your own race, your own ethnicity. He has, Randy has, his own, Randy has his own path. That's okay. I have my own path. All of us have the path that we're destined to walk. But nevertheless, we try to respect those people. But as, as Suzanne Hardwell stated, they are in a clear, clear minority. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back and, and get over to Michael Pope from WAMU here. Uh, and then Vincent Shelley and, and Mary Phillips, and we'll, we'll uh, get one more segment, I believe, and our special broadcast here, our roundtable discussion, uh, Red, Washington Redskin, what's in a uh, name, right here on Urban View. Okay. You just keep rolling. Keep going. Yep. Good? Just one moment. Okay. Oh, what's that? <coughs> How many minutes in this segment?